that if that young girl or that old man they're both con con consenting happy do you have any any obligation on them to tell them no or yes if they're both happy consenting Absolutely. so i have the answer to your question so the girl so the girl has to be consenting acceptable the man as well so if she she is not comfortable with the person who's old etc things like that she will not accept but let me give you something let me give you a, a bit of piece of information that is not shared widely about prophet muhammad himself prophet muhammad was was 24 25 years old do you know the age of his wife the first wife oh, the first wife first wife no. This is the problem, no one knows. Yeah, yeah. Everyone speaks about other wives, yeah. specifically Aisha maybe, and maybe yeah. other wives like, like Safiya, but they don't speak about the first wife. The first wife that he married was Khadija. He was 25 years old. Do you know how, how old she was? She was 40 years old. 15 years older than him. If he wants to, to pick young girls, you know he, how many wives he married? Only one of them was young and virgin. One of them was virgin. And I knew that Are you aware he was, of that? He was, um, the other wives that he had was to kind of take them in yeah. because of their circumstances. Uh, widows, widows. So was, their husband died in yes, war. Yes. They, they were slaves and he freed them. Yeah, they, they were 100. Kind of like one but not only that, not only that. Also social and political, uh, political uh, gathering between the Muslims and other tribes. So if she was a daughter of a, of a, a good lineage, a tribe which was well known, a people that he wants to bring closer to Islam, so he yeah. marries the daughter. So there were different reasons. Yeah. Different reasons, yeah, yeah. but I'll tell you something that this this is something that should be mentioned as well a lot. That the Quran does something very very interesting. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala addresses Prophet Muhammad and he tells them, "Tell your wives, if you want this life, i.e., if you want to get divorced, you're free. You have the freedom and the choice to get divorced whenever you want. Allah gave them the choice, not Prophet Muhammad. So if these women were not happy, the second day they will leave Prophet Muhammad. But the fact that Prophet Muhammad married when he was 25 years old." to a 40 years old woman. He stayed with her until she died. He never married any other wife until she died. He was 53, then he married another widow who was older, who was old. So Prophet Muhammad was not picking the young girls for himself, which is the propagated media image that they wanted to do. Uh, let, me, let me use a word which is, which is very new, which is pedophile. This word is very new. If you research the origin of this word, it didn't exist before. Because in this country in the 1880s, as I mentioned, it was seven years old. It was the norm. The life expectancy was low. The women used to get mature early. They did not have all of these toys and these kind of things. Yeah, the next step, next step for them is to get married straight away. So this word pedophilia. That's the way you grew up thinking and acting and so 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 people who study psychology, they tell you there are two two types of pedophiles. There are two types of pedophiles. People who pick on young girls because they're weak because they can pick on them. They're weak, basically. They're, they, they cannot defend themselves, basically. And another type who only desires young girls. So if we, if we have these two types of categories, we can never, according to the Western understanding of pedophilia, we can never fit Prophet Muhammad to them. Because Prophet Muhammad desired women who were older than him. He had women who, was, who, who were their age, who was his age as well. So he doesn't only desire young girls. And it was not because of uh, their weak, their young, etc. So we cannot Put this kind of definition of pedophilia. Different, different yes. worlds and a different, different world, different understanding and different values and, and as you said, different life expectancies. So, so I'll tell you, I'll give you another example. So Safiya, which is one of the wives of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu which was from a Jewish tribe, right? Prior to marrying Prophet Muhammad when she was 12, she was 10 years old and her father married her to someone else. So it was the norm of the society at that time to marry girls at that young age. That's why you haven't seen anyone mentioning the Prophet Muhammad. They called him crazy, they called him a magician, they called him all the different things that you can imagine. They never called him, why are you marrying a young girl? Because it was the norm of the society. People at that time and day and age used to do that. It was their norm. So if we say pedophilia is someone who marries a girl under 16, 17 years old, then the, the Brazilians are pedophiles or the ancestors of all the Europeans all the ancestors yeah. not, not only the king all the ancestors all the ancestors everyone, everyone. all the ancestors yes yes all the ancestors you know you know and, and that and what we said earlier on um which is good because um girls know more they're more educated they there's a different world so it, for them to turn around and say i'm not ready and for uh, a father or potential husband to kind of say okay so how, what do you think so far that. of this of this social system that I give you. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so sense. can I ask you a question now? Yeah. Is it right? 
Do you believe in a higher being? Do you believe in God? Yeah, do you yeah, believe? I believe in a spiritual being. Yeah. You believe, I believe you follow? I believe in an afterlife. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's yeah. a very good starting yeah. point. Yeah. Do you believe in in any religion? Do you follow any specific religion? I am still uh, no, I don't follow any particular religion, and I kind of open to lot. I think there's a lot of good things okay. in all religions, and of course we've got the bad as well. We agree with that. And, and I think whatever God is out there on the other side, I think He would be accepting of people's confusion, especially in this day and age, the sure. world that we've created. Sure. And I think just by being um, believing that there's an afterlife and there's a spiritual world and there is a higher um, intelligence than than us, I think it's enough for God, whatever God, to say, okay, that's fine, that's, a, that's an excellent starting point. And if I can live as a good person... As I told you, it's an excellent starting point. Yeah, 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 exactly, yes. yeah. Okay, I think that's, I, I yes. think that's fine. And, and I wish I knew whether Christian, Jewish, Muslim... You I, can. Those are the top three that always come you to can. mind. Is there? There's loads of other <laughs> because religions. Those, those, because those are the ones you all say. Because they're, 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 they're major, major, major religions. Yeah, yeah. this is it. So, so, this is it. If can, we all live together and accept how difference is, that's good. So we believe in that. We believe we believe in a concept of called Taish. We believe in harmoniously living yeah, with other people. Yeah, yeah, but we would say yeah. we would say a bit of a different thing. So what would we say as Muslims is that this person God will excuse him 100 percent until a certain point. This certain point when, when you demonstrate to him the truth, but he still reject the truth just out of arrogance. So a person knows that this makes sense, this is tr the truth. This has to be from a higher being, this has to be from God. This has to be the right explanation. It cannot make sense otherwise. And then and then he chooses knowingly that no, I'm not gonna follow. Why? Because there are multiple reasons. It could be desires, it could be society, it could be extra. This is the only way that actually we believe in Islam, that you will be held accountable for what you do. When the message is presented to you, right, the evidence is presented, not just the message, it has to be evidence. It has to be done eloquently. If the message is presented to you, you know it makes sense. You know it's impossible that someone would know that, that it has to be from God, but then you say, no, I'm not going to follow it. Why? Because I want to I wanna do this, or I want to do that. Or I... Does it make sense? I understand. Yes. So when you, when you mention, for example, that religions, different religions have truth in them, we completely agree on that. So we agree that, I'll give you an example. The Quran says, we have sent to every nation a message. Okay, so every nation in this world had a message. There was a lot of previous nations before us, right? So there was a lot of messengers, messengers and a lot of messages yeah, around. Absolutely. That's why you find yeah. different religi yeah. religions and in the world. And, and, and it's trust in everything that was written down and passed on and, you know, things yeah, It's a bit different with Islam. It, it, I'll explain. It is, it is. I'll explain. But uh, so, because there was a lot of messages, a lot of messengers, so there you have a lot of people claiming that there's a lot of different religions. But you will always find this common thread. Communality. Yes. This this is this thing that is always yes. in every religion. Absolutely. Don't kill, don't steal, Absolutely. be good, love yes. for humanity, what you love for yourself, etc. etc. Yes. These things that are Do you know why are they? They are. They're there from our Muslim perspective because this happened. Basically, when Allah, God basically, I'll tell you why we use this word Allah. Because this word is unique. It means that God is not a male or a female. Which is something very important to know. Very important to know. Why would he choose a son to be, not a daughter? Why would he be a father, not a, not a mother? Why would there be discrimination against one race, against the other? No. In Islam, we say God is above gender. He's above all of these kind of things. It does not have to be specified linked to one gender. God is above that. God is not uh, plural. God is just uniquely one being. The word Allah, you can only say it on the one true God. That's why we use this word. We say Allah. So when Allah sent messengers and messengers to different people, he intended only to send them to this locality, only to this people. For example, you have Moses who sent only to the Israelites, you have Abraham who sent to his people, Noah who sent to his people. So they were for their localities. What happened is after they died, people took their messages and then some people change, add to it, take from it. That's why you have today this a bit of differences here yeah, and there yeah. because people change in these kinds of different religions. But we say there will always be. But we say there will always be a pure message. You know what? I'll tell you why there will always be a pure message. I'll highlight you. You believe in an intelligent God, right? That created everything, ascribed to everything a purpose. There has to be a purpose ascribed to this human race. An objective purpose. You can have a subjective purpose, obviously, but there has to be an objective purpose ascribed to all the human race. The only way you can know this purpose is by the person creating the intelligence. Right? If I create a machine today, if I make a machine, let's say I'm a, I'm a scientist, I design a machine right now. You will ask me, why did you create this machine? What's the purpose? I have to tell you, right? I have to tell you. So if we're created, if we're created by a higher being, by a higher thing, the one who made your bag, ascribe purpose to it. If we're made, 
he has to ascribe purpose. And because he's an intelligent being, he will not leave us without, without purpose. He will not let us without guidance. He will not let us go astray. We as human beings, we need purpose. We require guidance. We require guidance. So we say there has to be a correct message somewhere. But you have to do some research. Yes, so I'll give you an example. In Judaism, this is the similarities now. I'm giving you from the Abraham faith. The similarities between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, right? Judaism and Christianity and Islam, there is circumcision, right? There is prayer, there is fasting of some sort. Now I'm not giving localities of the day. But if we, if we take a deeper look into the scripture, a deeper look into what the prophets did themselves, right? So you have, for example, Moses, right? You know how Moses prayed? How we pray? In the Bible, now we're using the Bible as, as a criteria for how Moses. You mean as a physical? Physical prayer. Physical prayer. Because you yeah, know, he that's a prayer. No, no he this didn't. is the whole point. Not like this, not like this. Not like this. So, Moses prayed his sin. This is, this is, I have liked the names for you now. Moses, Aaron, Abraham, David, Jesus, Joshua. These prophets, all these prophets in, in the, mentioned in the Bible, they prayed in one unique way, which is they're falling on their face and praying to God. Do you know why? This is the most precious part for a human being. It's your face. When you humble yourself, you put this most precious thing on the, on the floor when you're in front of God. This is the best way you can worship a higher being, you can worship the the closest that you can be with Him. So we as Muslims are the only pray, people who pray like this. There might be a minority of Christians doing it, but this is not the norm of the way you pray, right? So only Muslims pray this way. And when Prophet Muhammad taught us, yes. and when Prophet Muhammad taught us how to pray, he told us how to pray, he showed us, he then demonstrated to us by doing this. He told us, this is how all the prophets pray. So we see here the link. There's something that is being preserved in all the messages. How to pray, this specific way. Jesus had a beard, Muslim Muhammad has a beard. He told us to keep your beard. Moses, we believe, had a beard as well. So it's something consistent. Law of circumcision, prayer, uh, not eating pork, for example. Do you think, um, and how frowned upon would you think it would be if we didn't have a beard? Was it how frowned upon and how it, would that be totally unholy to shave and to get into your beard? Is that something as well that you must have to so, go into the afterlife when you die? Sure. You should be in so, the so, so in Islam, in Islam there are two types of sins, right? Major sins and minor sins. A major okay. sin, a major sin, a major sin is like you're killing someone, committing adultery. So you and could be. Yes. Not you, could, be yes. whatever, whatever. you will see Muslims without beard, obviously, 100%. Yeah, I do. So I, I do. You, you yeah. will. You yeah. will. So, so it's something that you should do, it's something that is good if you do. But if you don't, you're making a sin, right? It's like someone who is stealing, who is maybe cursing, maybe, uh, maybe lying, maybe lying. So all of these are sins. Yes, so many, 100%, 100%. That's why we require guidance. And, 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 and I must say, you know, um, Islam uh, is religion, and I see so much beauty in religions, and it's that code, it's those ethics, um, that is the most important thing to have. And as I say, you know, if it is, there are... It is. But, but, but can I ask you a question? You believe that, 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 I agree with what you're saying completely, but this is a point to, where I want to highlight. I believe it's a crucial point to highlight. If God did not leave us without guidance, for example, if he said all of these people are okay, maybe this person does, this person, this will only create one thing, chaos, number one, will create chaos. Number two will create corruption in the land, why? Because how can you ascertain uh, what's right and wrong if God didn't tell you? You can never know what's right and what's wrong. The, if not the same code, a similar code. Objective morality, which is, has to come from a source other than yourself, to be objective obviously. It has to come from a source other than yourself. So we believe without this objective message that has to be there, there has to be a message somewhere. There will be chaos, there will be no, more, no good and bad, everyone will do whatever they want. So that's why we accept harmonious living, but we say there has to be absolute truth. It's just logical there has to be absolute truth. God will not create us and then go. I'm not going to give you a message. Yo, it's not going to work this way. He has to give us some sort of guidance. So the Quran, the difference between it, and this is what I want to highlight, and any all the other religious scriptures, that the Quran is preserved. There is no change in the Quran. There is no letter added. There is no word added. There is nothing taken from it. The Quran is 100% preserved. So you can know this is a pure message of God. You can know that you can follow this, you know, wholeheartedly, not worried about anything. No man adding something. No one taking anything. You know what? I'll tell you what. 
so in, in, in Islamic tradition, in Islamic tradition, us preserving the Quran or preserving our own text can be through two ways, right? A written form and an oral. Okay? So obviously we have I think in Yemen around a quarter of a, of a million manuscripts with the Quran, right? And these manuscripts correlate with each other. They make one text that we, we have today. If this text was not true, you will find something strange in here, something missing there, right? Like you find, for example, in other religions like Christianity, in Judaism, like these other religions. Yes, 66 books, 70 tables. There's difference of opinion whether this is a scripture, all of the scripture. If someone adds something, we have evidence that someone kept that. But we have a large number of manuscripts. But not only that, the most important point is that you have millions of people memorizing the Quran by heart. Every day you're reciting it. If you recite something every day, everywhere around the world, authenticating it, is it possible to add or take from it? Something being authenticated by everyone in the hearts of millions cannot be taken, you can never change anything. Even a letter, even a pronunciation of the word, you cannot, you cannot change. 100%. So because we have all of these millions memorizing, we have the Quran that we have today. We authenticate it every year. The whole book, we recite it from memory in Ramadan, the whole month. So it's 30 parts every day, one part. We, we authenticate it. So it's impossible for you to change it. Yes. 100%. You know why? Because we believe this is crucial for our actual life. This life is just a door, a step of a door. Yeah. A step of a door that you go to. So you have to know where you're going. So because we believe that this is our religion. But not only that, because the Quran itself, God intended to preserve the message. You know why? I gave you the message of all the different prophets that came from outside, right? Prophet Muhammad, the only, he is like them, all of them. The only difference is that he came with a universal message for everyone, for you, for me, for him, for everyone around the world. So God had to preserve the message for everyone because it was not for a certain locality. You understand? So the Quran says we have sent down the chapter 15, we have sent down the revelation, and we are going to preserve the revelation. And this is the way. But I want you to highlight this. The Quran says a very interesting verse, which I believe it's a miracle on itself. And let's see if you agree with this. So the Quran says, we have made the Quran easy for memorization, right? So this is a claim, right? I can write something now and say this is easy for memorization. I'm just making it, right? So what is the possibility of someone from England, someone from uh, China, someone from India, memorizing a text, which is a 114 chapter, 6,000 verses, right? In a language that they don't speak. Reciting, all of them reciting the same thing Exactly. Reciting it better than the people of their own language. Is it possible? Today you have, you have millions doing it. Millions in, 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 uh, in Pakistan memorizing. Millions in India memorizing. Min millions in Indonesia memorizing. Min millions in Indonesia memorizing. And they all, if you bring one from Malaysia, one from Indonesia, one from Egypt, one, and we recite, we will recite the same thing. This shows the miracle that this has to be from God. It's not just a statement made. It's not just a statement, made, right? It's it's a factual thing. It's a factual thing. So now you can know that you have a pure message. The next step, the next step to do is what? Well. You believe in God. God has to, to give us some sort of revelation, right? So now we have to criticize, not criticize, analyze. This is a better word. A better word. Analyze the revelation. Analyze the different revelation. Yes. Does this revelation make sense? Does this revelation innately? We have an innate disposition. As Muslims, we believe. We have an innate disposition to know what's right and what's wrong. We have an innate, vaguely, obviously, not 100%. We have an innate disposition to know that there is a higher being, to know that someone created us. There's a power beyond us, you know? So this innate disposition will correlate. If I tell you a god is a cow, you will tell me no. I do not feel God can never be a cow, right? He can never be something which cannot even defend itself. They alone create all of us, right? So we have to use our rationality, our intellect. So we look at the religions that make different claims. For example, Hinduism making a claim that there are 330 million gods. Is that possible? Do you think it's possible? I'll give you an example. If there's two gods, there's two gods, obviously we're not gods. We're nothing, you know? <laughs> but let's assume. No, no, we, we are nothing. But if we are two gods, right? And I want you to die, he wants you to live, right? So we, we have three possibilities. We have three possibilities. You die, you live, nothing happens to you. If you die, there is only one true God. If you live, there is only one true God. If nothing happens to you, how can we be gods who could not even affect our own creation? I want you to imagine, this is what the Quran says. I want you to imagine 350 million gods. Imagine the world. 
it cannot happen. It's impossible. Two people cannot drive a car, right? So we set aside a religion that says something like this. And it says that a tree is a god, you're a god, I'm a god. This, they say that literally. So we set aside. It cannot, it cannot happen. It doesn't make sense. There's got to be a higher. Yes. There has to be a higher. Exactly. One higher. That's probably how I would see it yes. as well. As, as one. And, and like, uh, and like a, Something beyond it. You know, I'll tell you something. You tell me you tell me whether it makes sense or not. The Quran says in chapter 112, description of God, right? Allah is uniquely one. Self-sufficient, independent. Everything depends upon him, he doesn't depend on anything. He neither begets nor he's begotten. He doesn't have sons and daughters and mothers and fathers. He's not like us, he's above us. And there is nothing like pointed. There's nothing equivalent to him. How do you describe it? Does it make sense to you? Yeah, I feel that it would have to be that way. He's not a man, he's not yeah, a woman. It's yeah, instantly yeah. correlated with your disposition, right? This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to see whether it will correlate with our disposition or not. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what people would think. Most people would think with a spiritual being. Do you know why they would think that? Why they would think that? Because God created them this way. You understand? They created them with a pure disposition to know these kinds of things. So when we discovered the new island in the Amazon, for example, they believed in one higher being, not a man, not a woman, above the heavens, cannot be seen. They believed every act they do is, is for the sake of God. Which Muslims believe. They believe everyone is responsible for his own sin. Which is against Christianity totally, because they believe that someone took all the sins of the world. Why would someone be punished for what I do? Right? It's not fair. How can you say God is just and someone else is punished for what I did? Question, that is, isn't it? It's a huge I'm, question. You know? I'm uncertain. I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we I as can't. Muslims, I was going to say, I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah. We as Muslims, we believe that uh, women are precious people, right? Women are, every woman is a queen to us. This queen of this country does not shake her hand with every no. Tom, Dick, and Harry <laughs> Oakley, let's say, you know? <laughs> There's only five people, royal yeah, people, I royal people, you know? I wondered whether you could or not. Yeah. So we as Muslims, yeah. if my sister is here, she cannot shake the hand of a man, she doesn't know. And vice versa. So it's not a gender thing, but it's someone who's not lawful to you. You can touch the hand of your wife, obviously. It can be a marriage contract, then you touch the, the, the hand of your wife. You can touch the hand of your sister, the closely related people to you. You can do that. But I want you to think about this. There is gold, there is pearls, there is jewelries, right? All of these kinds of things for you to get them. What do you have to do? You have to dig deep inside. You have to, to go dive inside the ocean to get the pearls. You have to dig deep inside the mountain to find the gold, right? So all of these kinds of things are always covered. It's not easily accessible. We believe women are more precious than that. So not everyone just touches a woman, does this with a woman. No, it has to be a respectful marriage bond relationship. And this stops what? This stops using and abusing women, objectifying women as objects as happening in the society. You think it's stopped now? Here's the UK, it's the workplace. You think it's stopped women shaking hands? No, this is happening. Have you heard of... Uh, Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. The Matrix guy. You know, yeah. the Matrix, yeah. Yeah. You know he stopped doing that and they kept praising him. But when Muslims don't do that, they, know what? they say, oh, look at these guys, so backward. They believe they shouldn't touch on But Keanu Reeves is doing that. This highlights science sort of hypocrisy in the society. It's, it's, you can have a relationship with a woman. But don't use her and abuse her. If you allow a man to touch a woman, why is it only a hand touch? Why was it stopped there? Touching is touching, right? It can be here. So Islam stops touching, not handshaking specifically. Touching another woman which is not lawful to you. You understand? Yeah, like a stranger, someone yes. who's not a woman. But, but, but um, like, um, if I was your sister and I knew him as your friend, is that acceptable? I no, they're not. They're not. They're not. Only if you're related to him or you're his wife or you're his. This is how you can actually. It's kind of a yes. relationship. But not only that, it's actually, it actually stops what we have in the society. Because God set the system, He knows the, the nature of a man and woman. Look, there is always this, this physical, yes, there is always this physical feeling that you will have in, in, in skins touching. That's why when you see a movie, they're sitting on a dinner, what do they start doing? He starts holding yeah. your hand. Why? Why? If there is nothing physical there, you know, he will not be doing this, you understand? But this initiates a physical connection, yes. Yes. A physical connection yes. between yes. the two people. It's true. It's so we true. believe yeah. this should be done with a person who is lawful to you. Not just a stranger, we don't know why. Pressure, making the woman as a precious being and the man as a precious being. He's lawful to the person who is lawful to her and otherwise. This is how we hold women and our Islamic civilization and society. And that's why women choose to wear head covering as well. So veil covering is not obligatory, but head covering is. Yes, yeah. And I must say, <coughs> 
I wish, and I totally, um, I, I love the, the, the scarf and the hair, and I understand top to top. I can't, I really wish we would I'll tell you something. Places, I really wish they wouldn't, because it's you not know, you're, you're telling me, does anyone have a Quran? Does anyone have a Quran with him? You, you were telling me something which is very... Which is very yeah, yeah. Which is and very, I'd be honest about you. it. Honestly, you told me, you told me I wish, I wish yeah. that I can do this. I wish that I can become Muslim. I wish, I wish, right? The Quran already speaks about that. He speaks about you. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in chapter 2, those who disbelieve will wish that they will have become Muslim. What's stopping you today? It's, What's it's, stopping you from yeah, taking a step? It's, it's, I'm exploring. Yeah. I'm still exploring. <laughs> I am still you know? exploring. Yeah, so I have to give but, you obviously but, a Quran. But it's so I'll give you. Do you have a Quran? Have you read the Quran before? I, do you know I've um, picked up a Quran? I must admit I've not sat and read it. Okay. No, but I, I have. I have access to Quran. I okay. do. I you do. have one right now. No, no, no. Would you no. like me to, to present one for you? No, because I wouldn't want to take it and lose it. I would, I'm going in there. Okay. I'm going in there. And okay. then I have to travel home. That's all right. That's yeah. Right. But, so, I, so. I have, but that's something, you know, Buddhism as well, I think is an interesting okay. Okay. religion. I'll give you something. I'll give you, I'll give you a step. I'll give you a step ahead, right? Let's start with the major religions. Because look, this guidance cannot be in a minor religion. God cannot give us a guidance in a minor religion. We will spend our whole life finding and we cannot. It has to be well known, something easy, accessible, right? So let's deal with the, with the major religions of God. Easily. We dealt with Christianity, I believe. God cannot be a man. Why? Because God is an infinite being, right? Can you fit a sea into a bottle? Never. God is an infinite being. Just as God cannot lie, cease to exist, He cannot do something against His nature by becoming less than He is. Becoming ignorant, independent, going to the bathroom, doing all of these kind of things. It makes Him unholy. He cannot do that. So God cannot become a man. So we'll, we'll set aside Christianity. We have Judaism. Do you know how you become a Jew? You have to be born a Jew. You have to be from a chosen people of God. So is it reasonable to say that God is just but he's a racist? He chose a certain people and he did not choose you? That's a bit um, exclusive, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it does not worry, you know? So we say, that's why you don't see Jewish people here inviting you to Judaism. Have you ever seen someone sitting in the street inviting you? Some of them, they say, some of them, when you ask them, they say it's a long process. Some of them, they'll tell you the process is a seven-year process of them monitoring you, and then they will decide, they're the gods now. Maybe you can be a Jew, or maybe you cannot be a Jew. How, how can that happen, you know? So we will take Judaism. Buddhism, you mentioned. You know why Buddhism, why Buddhism is, is, is interesting? You can be a Muslim Buddhist. Buddhism is a philosophy. It does not believe in a higher being. You know that? They don't believe in God, they don't believe, it's not a religion, it's a philosophy. It's, 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 a, philosophy. it's a way of yes, life. It's just a philosophy. Yes, it's, a it's not even a way of life, it's just a philosophy of Buddha that teaches two things, mainly two things. Selfishness, don't, don't be selfish. Lose yourself and, and lose your desires, which Islam teaches. That's why I'm telling you, you can be a Muslim Buddhist, you know? So we have Buddhism, we have Sikhism. Sikhism is a cop out. It's, a, it's a, a part of Islam and a part of Hinduism. So the Guru Nana, he did pilgrimage, right? These people ask him, you're confusing us. Are you a Muslim? You're a Hindu. Why are you? He said, I'm both. So he took this part that he likes. Is this part that he likes? Then he made Sikhism. But Sikhism even says everyone is right. So if Sikhism says everyone is right, it cannot happen. You know what? If I say someone who says God is a man is right, and someone who says God can never be a man is right, it's a contradiction. It cannot say that everyone is right, right? It has to be someone right or someone wrong or both wrong. 100% God is something else, you know? So there has to be someone who's right and someone who's wrong. So it, Sikhism, this is Sikhism. What else, what else do we have? This is the major, Hinduism we discussed already, right? The 330 million God, cow being God. We already discussed that. So it's clear way to go. It's not a hard way to go. Islam is the only religion that believes in a one higher being. Self-sufficient, independent, doesn't get tired, doesn't feel weak above all of this creation. He connects with us, he loves us, he gives us guidance. Islam is the only one that gives you this complete picture that relates with you straight, 100%. We don't worship men, we don't worship idols, we don't worship nothing physical. We worship the one who created all of this. No? But not only that, let me tell you a few things. Prophet Muhammad existed around 1400 years ago, right? He lived, he lived, he lived around 1400 years ago, right? But Prophet Muhammad predicted the future that we're living in today. Is it possible for a human being to know what's happening in the Is it po every time being right? Every time he does it. Impossible. Impossible. He can be sometime right, some guesswork obviously, sometime right, sometime wrong, all wrong. But all right is impossible. 
of Prophet Muhammad did that. You know why? As a proof that he's coming from higher being. So he's not just making a claim that he's a prophet of God. Because Jesus, Moses, Noah, Abraham, all of these people had that miracle as well. But it was an empirical one. Why? Because they were for their people, for their localities. They were not for everyone. But Prophet Muhammad was for everyone, so he had to bring an evidence base, a message that is for everyone. That the evidence that you can analyze today and you can come to the conclusion that he's a prophet. No. He has to be a prophet. He can't be otherwise. I'll give you some examples. So, Quran is a very unique book. It's the most unique book that you will, you will ever put your hands on, obviously. Because <laughs> we believe it's literally the word of God. So, Quran is the word of God coming to Prophet Muhammad by an angel who could not read or write. He recited the Quran. His companions memorized it and wrote it down as well. They did the two. They memorized it and they wrote it down. So, Prophet Muhammad, there's two types of, t of text in the Quran. The Quran uh, in Islam. The Quran and the prophetic narrations of the Prophet said, which is not the word of God, his words, but of things that is going to, ha to happen or teachings to us as human beings coming from a higher being. Okay? So the Quran, being a unique book, it correlates with the science of everyday and age. It correlates well, I believe, with it. I believe science can exist alongside... No, 100%. Um, religion, of course, of course. Do you see in Andalus and, and in, the, in the Islamic, in Spain, when we had the Islamic Empire, why do you think they thrived so much? Why do you think they developed the scientific method? Yeah, because Islam allows yeah. them to do that. The Quran allowed them to do that. That's why you have stars today named after Arabic people, you know? Because of that, because of that, because of Islam. So what we say is, but this is not the unique thing. The unique that is, the Quran mentions things that we just learned today gives you a specific description of embryology that correlates with today's science. Science changes every day, but even when it changes, it always correlates with the Quran. Because science is not one thing that is st steady, right? It changes every day. So even though it changes every day, it correlates with the Quran. The Quran gives you a specific description of embryology. Is it possible for Prophet Muhammad to know that 1500 years ago? He didn't have a, a telescope, microscope. He didn't have any equipment to look. He was living in the deserts of Arabia. I don't know. The only way he can know is through divine intervention. You know, the earth being round, all of these kind of things that you may say are facts of today, the Quran correlates with. The Quran says when two seas meet, there is a barrier between them. They don't mix. They have the different density. They have different salinity. Who gave him this information? He lives in the desert. How can he know that? But not only that, Prophet Muhammad predicted the future that we're living in today. And this is what I want to have. He said there will come a time where the Bedouin barefoot Arab men will be competing in tall buildings. Where is the tallest building in the world today? What is it? The tallest building in the world today. It's the tallest building in the world. Yeah, it, it is in uh, the Dubai. Emirates, isn't it? Yeah, Dubai. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know who's competing with them? Saudi Arabia is competing with them this year. This year, actually, they're competing with them. Is it possible for a man 1500 years ago to make a statement that these Bedouin Arabs will be competing in the tallest buildings of the world that is happening today? That is a heck of a thing to know. Well, not only that, yeah. we don't, we don't <laughs> still there. You know? He said, the time will come close, near the hour or the last or the last day, the day of judgment. The time will come close. A year will feel like a month. A month will feel like an hour. And an hour will feel like a burning leaf. You know, you have a leaf and you burn it, that's an hour. Today you pick up your phone, it's two o'clock, you leave your phone, it's, it's already eleven o'clock, you know? Time flies because of technology. But not only that, even the time in travel distance. It used to take months to go to somewhere else. Now it's two hours in a plane. How can you know that? Prophet Muhammad made predictions of the countries that would become Muslim by name. He named Egypt that Egypt would become Muslim. Jordan would become Muslim. Syria would become Muslim. Constantinople, present day Turkey. India, Pakistan, Islam would spread there. He said Islam would spread to the east and the west. But when he was doing that, he had 30 followers being prosecuted in Mecca. So an atheist historian, he says, this is the, the other thing that I'm going to tell you. An atheist historian, he said, this is paramount to an Eskimo. He has some Eskimos around him. And he's telling him, look guys, we're going to conquer Russia and USA. Is that even possible? Some 30 Eskimos living in the Eskimo, conquering USA and, and America. It's impossible. Prophet Muhammad was telling them, you will overcome the two biggest empires, the Roman and the Persian Empire. But well, not only that, he named the name of the Persian king and the Roman king that they will be the last Roman and Persian king. He said Kisra and Qaisar, they will be the last Roman and Persian kings. He predicted that his daughter is going to be the first one to die after her. And she did. He predicted that two of his companions are being killed by treachery. Even though they had millions of wars, they could, obviously not millions, a lot of wars, that they could have been killed in war. But no, they were killed by treachery, like the Prophet said. Not only that, Prophet Muhammad makes predictions which are paradoxical. You know, if you're lucky guessing, you will not make two statements against each other, you know? Why is that the, the, the probability of two statements against each other occurring? I'll give you some examples. Prophet Muhammad said, the pen will prevail, writing will spread, widespread. 
which is today you just open your phone, you know? It's a prediction in itself, but not only that. He said that ignorance will spread. And this is a paradox because if writing spreads, people will be educated. Today it's easy that we have a lot of accessibility. At that time when they had literature, they used to value it, read it. If someone has literature, he's a well-learned person. So he said that writing will spread, but people will become ignorant, which we have today. It's a paradox of prediction. But not only that, he said that this is, I want you to highlight this one. He said that nations will gather upon you to prosecute you. What's happening today that we see? But the companion asked a very logical question. He said, will we be few in number? Because we're few, we are minority, we're being prosecuted. He said, no, we'll be like the sea. So we will be a majority, a paradox. We will be a majority, but be prosecuted. Today, Muslims are a quarter of the world. From every four people you meet is one Muslim. Why? Because they know this is coming from Harvey. There's evidence. See? So he made a paradoxical prediction. But not only that, he made another one. He said that Islam will spread to every house, but immorality will spread. Why do you think this is a paradoxical prediction? Because Islam teaches morality. And if Islam spreads, morality will spread. But he said no. Islam will spread and immorality will spread. People will be mating like dogs in the street. Do we see that? We see that today. But not only that, that he said when people do that, this is what I want you to highlight. They will have diseases in their ancestors that they never heard of. AIDS, herpes, herpes, 13 serious diseases that you get today from homosexuality, penetration. These things did not exist before. They didn't exist. So I want you to imagine, could he have known this knowledge 1400 years ago? It's, it's too much. He has to be getting it from the divine knowledge. He has to be a prophet of God. He has to be from this higher being that you believe in already that makes sense to you. So what would stop you of taking the step of becoming a Muslim? Do you know how a person becomes a Muslim? He just states what he believes in. He says, I believe. Oh, yes. That's, That's it, it, you know? Yes, That's yes, it. So he says, yes, I believe in yes. Allah. Allah yes. is the only true God. And I believe the Prophet Muhammad is his Muslim. You become a Muslim. Would you like to do that? It's easy. Well, it's, it's, a step, you know? it's a very powerful uh, yeah, I have <laughs> argument to say. I'll say yeah, this. This statement, <laughs> that statement, that statement that you will make of I believe that there is no God except Allah, Prophet Muhammad is his messenger, outweighs the heavens and the earth. Do you know why? Because I can give you any amount of money, but you will never give me a pair of eyes. You will never do this. So these pair of eyes that you have are more valuable than any amount of money in the world. We th you thank the Creator, giving him his rights, for giving it to you by saying this thing. It's like me giving you the money, you're thanking this person. We're not thanking anyone. This is the biggest transgression you can make, right? So you, by not saying that God is the only, Allah is the only true God, you're denying him. You're saying, I don't care, you give me all these blessings that I have, and give me evidence that your religion is a true religion, but I'm not going to accept it. But not only that, these words will take you into paradise for sure. If you die upon them, you will go to paradise. But if you make major sins, you don't repent, you will be tortured for them, but you will enter paradise afterwards. Why? Because you didn't deny God. You didn't deny His right. You gave Him.